Okay, good evening everyone. I'm Fred Cook. I founded the Free EMS Project back in 2008 at the beginning, January. And ever since, it's pretty much ruined my life. Um, closer to the microphone, okay. Uh, Boris said I've got 15 minutes to tell you all about the entire last six years, so let's have a crack at it. Uh, thank you, Bori. We met, as he said, in Deutsche Bank, and um, if it wasn't for him, it would have been bloody horrible, and it was anyway, to be fair. Um, so I'll never work for them again, or any other financial institute <laughs> for that matter. Uh, why is this vertical? It's vertical because Boris said to me, not horizontal. <laughs> <laughs> so it's vertical. Uh, what's an ECU? Who, who here has a, a, mo a modified car or a car at all? Yeah, Sorry, <coughs> who here has a modified car? All right, that's good. And who has, has a standalone ECU on that? All right, you can explain to everybody else what that is. Um, I actually have a circuit board, an older revision for people to have a play with. Pass it around, I guess. Uh, an ECU is, is the brain behind your internal combustion engine running and, and operating solenoids, measuring things, and so forth. Um, why do you want one? You want one because you want your car to go fast or use less fuel. Uh, and in either case, a standalone can help you do that. Uh, that's one there. Uh, same as the one that's flying around, but with the rest of the components. Um, that's a, a vehicle that uses the system and a bunch of Swedes, me standing amongst them. And if I just switch over to the video. You can see this in progress, what it actually does. This is free EMS. That's what it does. which some of us quite like. Uh, that's a happy customer, one of the Swedes, Jonas, and Silverstone, which is a F1 circuit in the UK. Uh, so to, to tell you sort of how I got into the project, how I started it, why I started it, uh, it's necessary to go back in time a little bit. And back in the, I guess when I was a teenager or in my early 20s, there was a DIY EFI community, a mailing list with a bunch of people hacking on uh, GM and Ford ECUs. And it was a thriving community. People shared knowledge, they reverse engineered stuff, and new stuff was developed, and it was great. And then a couple of people who were remain nameless developed a product, and it kind of failed, and then they developed another simpler product, which had great success. And I think a couple of people here probably know what that is. Um, but it had some problems. Um, I was once a fan of that product. I was a member of the cult, I was a supporter, I was a fanboy, and shame on me for that, because it takes a while to open your eyes, but once you do, you never go back. Um, the Awakening, there were technical problems, there was bad circuit design, bad software development, really bad code, if you see it, you'd cry, honestly. Uh, brainwashing, indoctrination, bad politics, and worst of all, no freedom to fix these problems, uh, which uh, you know, caused a lot of people a lot of pain. Uh, I wanted to make a fresh start. I wanted people to have the freedom to create what they wanted in, in their vision of an engine management system. I wanted to do everything from first principles, sort of test and, and develop and go back to absolute basics and not sort of follow what other people had done in the past. Uh, I wanted to do really high quality, which I haven't, in my opinion, achieved yet, but I'm, I'm on the way there. We are on the way there. Um, and to do that, I, I thought, keep the features out, build a structure, and add the sort of features which are very easy to add uh, last, um, and avoid the mistakes that other people have made in the past, obviously, as well. Uh, the journey, it's been a, a long and hard <laughs> six years. Uh, I spent nine months basically working on it full time after I had some insulting job offers in the UK. I just flat turned down. I thought I can do something for free and it'll be more fun and I don't need that money. <laughs> Um, I did that, and then I ran out of money, and my girlfriend at the time said, get a job, Fred, and so I did. And that's when I met Boris. Um, I spent nine, nine months working in London, but I lived in uh, Middleton Cheney, which is closer to Birmingham. So the commute was two hours in the morning, two hours at night, four hours a day, and of course I had to keep coding, so 
I was up until one, two, three o'clock in the morning and up again at half past five to have breakfast, have a shower and jump on the train. So I basically slept between two and five hours a day for about nine months solid and only, only broke down in tears every three months of that. Uh, then I left the UK and I did a three month sort of American road trip around the States. I bought a car and so on. Uh, nine months of absolutely nothing while I recovered from Europe and New Zealand. Um, nine months of homelessness when I ran out of money and lived in my car, coding a lot though. Uh, and then one month in the States on the way here and two and a half years living in Spain with my wife, Isabel, and we'll get on to that soon. Uh, the UK period, as I said, I, I had no idea what the hell I was doing with embedded C, so I got that down. Uh, I was coding on the train literally the entire journey, an hour and a half in from uh, the WAPs into London and back, coding all night, uh, coding on the tube standing up on my triple E like this. Uh, if I was inspired enough, uh, my laptop broke, I got sent to Scotland to be repaired, I was coding on paper, designed some of the code, typed it in afterwards, and it worked. You know, how often does that happen? Um, got to the US, there was all, all those things happen, I'll, I'll go through those now. Uh, I bought the car, that's it, that was the first car that ran on free EMS, it was a Volvo 1992 740GL 2.3 litre, slush box, automatic, piece of crap. But I drove it 20,000 kilometres around the States, and it was good. That's me with my Tripoli. Uh, and of course I loaded up with stereo equipment and lots of Spanish wine. <laughs> it's a great trip. Uh, I built the ECU just after that in Phoenix. That was in San Diego where I bought it. Um, cleared up my mate's desk and built that thing, which looks ridiculously simple because it was. The code that was on it was terrible. It was really simple. Shouldn't have been able to use it. Was. Drove around on it. Tuned it. Beautiful. First install done in the middle of the, the desert in the forest in a place called Cinders in Arizona. Um, that was pretty cool. In the middle of the night, generator running, sort of wiring stuff up. Uh, I, I did a lot of coding. Well, not a lot. I did a tiny bit of coding on the US trip. I did some while driving. That's uh, Bonneville Salt Flats there. I, I probably wasn't coding there. I was probably just enjoying the view. But I was doing 100 miles per hour, and I, I did code at high speed a few times. Um, I did some at the top of the Empire State Building <laughs> until the security guard decided that coding was dangerous. Uh, I fixed a few bugs on my friend's couch in New York City and, and down by the water as well. Uh, and then eventually in Florida I, I fixed some hardware problems by adding a single capacitor and we tuned it. It's my friend Rob, he lives in Atlanta. Uh, he, he tuned the engine while I drove and by feel, by gut, instinct, we, we got it running pretty nice. Uh, we had no sensors, we had no sort of diagnostic equipment, we just did it by gut feel. Uh, drove it across from one part of Florida to the other, attended a party with, um, oh, what are they called? Grassroots Motorsport Magazine editors and owners. That was pretty fun. And then I had to get rid of it. Sold, ripped, cut a few wires, ripped it out, got it, got it running stock again, and went home to New Zealand with a tear in my eye and a smile on my face. Uh, Homeless, no money, like none. Like a grand when I started and then that was running out and somebody nice sent me some more and so on and so forth. Too much pride, lots of people said, come and stay, come and stay with me for a few weeks, Freddie. You know, get off the street, uh, it, it'll be better, you get yourself a job. And I said, no thank you. Uh, I, lost, I lost 10 kgs, maybe 9 kgs lighter than I am right now. So you know, when I stood up, I got dizzy. Uh, I wasn't too good, but I could still code, damn it. <laughs> I made... I made, a lot of, I made a lot of progress, uh, mostly in the dark outside of the library in a place called Takapuna, which their Wi-Fi during the day wouldn't work a damn inside with all of the Asians streaming videos, but at night there were none of them in there, and you could get it from the street at, at high speed. It was quite good, so I did that. Engine idling to keep the heater and the radio and the inverter powering the laptop, and so on and so forth. Got three more cars, engines running, uh, and left to Spain. And there's the, the hotel, that's what I lived in, that was my first night. Fucking cold. Uh, nothing compared to Poland, of course, but for me it was. Um, the horrible places that I had to wake up in with sunrises and so forth at the beach, at the lake. Terrible, terrible time. Um, my, my turbocharged Mazda truck, which was the second engine, it lasted about two weeks before I put a piece of metal like that big out the side of the engine oil all over the road. And, but it was scarily fast before that happened. And that was my fault. I, I blew it up. It wasn't the system. Um, I blew up the one before that too in a different way, and I'll probably blow up the next one. 
Uh, and the third, that was the hotel. I got the hotel running. Uh, ignition control with dirty old carburetors. Uh, and the fourth and final one in New Zealand before I left was that, which is a Toyota 4AG engine. They, they rev to about 8,000 RPM standard. Um, pretty nice engine for a dead standard engine. Um, and then there was the, the exit, the farewell party, which was a, a bunch of car guys from a group called oldschool.co.nz and my friend Preston. Uh, and those, yes, those are flames. That engine was running with no exhaust, making a hell of a noise, a glorious noise for a, a small crowd who cheered, but I missed the opportunity to film that. Uh, on the way to Spain, I stopped by the US for a month, got another car running, completely failed to get a sixth car running, and somebody else, <coughs> on account of their laziness and uh, hyperactivity, f helped fail to get uh, yet another car running. Disappointing results. I won't waste my time with some of those people again. Um, the first one that did run was uh, Sean's Turbo V8 Camaro, which is a pretty cool car. I drove that thing. And that's Sean, my favorite slacker. Love you, mate, but pull some finger. Um, and then I came to Spain, Viva España. I got married, great. Glacial bureaucracy, horrible. A year and a half to become legal. Um, broken economy, not good pay, but... That might be familiar to some people here, I guess. Um, steady, steady progress, being unemployed for a year and a half gives you the opportunity to write quite a lot of code. New car every approximately six weeks because the, the vehicles in New Zealand just before that were probably the first real vehicles, not the Volvo. Um, so it was then possible for more cars to run quite easily, including eventually my wife's, which is quite a special little vehicle despite being very ordinary. Married. Whoa, replay. <laughs> uh, the SSS Espana, uh, and the Weiss car. Uh, what else we got? Current status. Everything's there, more or less. Like Some features aren't, but they're easy to add. Uh, nothing's complete. Like Everything's missing something. Something doesn't quite work right. It's a pain in the ass to use. You know? it, it really is. Uh, but it works really well, as you could see in that video earlier. Uh, good testers are hard to find. People who are like available and keep their engines running. Sean. Um, and bench testing simply isn't good enough. There's a lot that you can't really foresee and, and, and fake on a test bench. Uh, it's been used in nine countries on 12 different brands of vehicle, vehicles ranging from 1932 to 2007. Um, challenges, you know, testing embedded code, there are a couple of ways to do that. that that's a bit of a challenge. Real-time embedded coding, also a bit of a challenge. The biggest challenge of all, people management. Impossible, <laughs> literally. Uh, and also finding time to code while trying to achieve people management. Uh, fear and ignorance of people using existing systems. You know, that they've got this sort of mindset that uh, they can only use what their friends have used or, you know, or, or what's popular on the internet at the time. They, they don't want to try something new. That, that they're afraid of it. And that's, that's fine. That'll die with time. What I've gained, I've, I've gained a huge amount of knowledge and experience. I've gained a holistic view of engine management and, and engine control. Huge number of new friends here and there, even more enemies. You can't make progress without doing that. Uh, and of course, engine control freedom. No one can stop me from doing what I want with my engine right now. And they can't stop you either, because you can use it too. Uh, losses, my sanity, it's gone, long gone. Boris, Boris knows that. <laughs> uh, my health in various ways, my naivety, uh, that comes down to leaving little old New Zealand. And my finances completely ruined. Two years of work and six years and a CV that looked half empty except for this open source stuff that no one really cares about. Uh, and of course, the best years of my life staring at a computer screen. Uh, the future, I gotta focus on usability. So I wanna, I wanna make it accessible to ordinary people who can't get in there and add their configuration with an IDE or Vim or Emacs or whatever. I wanna get my hands dirty and make some noise again because I haven't been able to do that much in Spain. And, and you can't do it legally at all in Spain. Um, and keep building the thriving community, opportunities potentially for profit, continued freedom, and of course, world domination. That's a little chart. Uh, this one was <laughs> just a couple of days ago, and I, I was on the phone to the guy while he fired it up. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate that very much. Um, what else have we got? Thank you, donors. Everyone who sent me some money, some electronics, some computers, some tools. I love you. <laughs> Faithful supporters, I love you too. Testers. Also good. Uh, various contributors who wrote other bits of sort of related software. My ex, Lindsay, and my wife, Isabel, for putting up with my shit. Uh, heartfelt thanks to all. 
Uh, and that's it.